Boat Track, a division of MTS, inexpensive UK or international vessel tracking. This short video offers you an overview of using our software and an introduction to some of its features. To better follow this demonstration, using any browser, type in www.boattrack.co.uk. Once the program is loaded, click on Demo Map. The program offers you two different types of screen, one designed specifically for smartphones, the other for computers. We'll use the computer one for this demonstration because it shows more. Clicking on the image will load the program. This is just one of many ways to load the program. We will start this tutorial using some of our test motor vehicles, so there is more to see on the map. We will deal with marine specific items further on. Once in the computer screen you will see there are many options. But for the moment, let's just look at two of them. This is the map area. And this is the object area. Objects are the items you are tracking, such as vessels or vehicles. Note with the phone version of the app, these two screens are separate and not combined as they are on the computer one. If you hold down the left mouse button, you can drag the map around put it where you want. If you go across to the object box you can click on a vehicle's name and it will take you to where that vehicle is. In this case this one is in the Channel Islands. If I now go up and pick on the cherry picker it will take me to where that vehicle is near Croydon. In this case you can't immediately see the vehicle because there's three of them in the area. By zooming in, one of the vehicles immediately stands out on its own, however I'm still left with two. Clicking on the two shows the vehicle's location parked alongside another tracked vehicle. If we now zoom back out and centralise the map, another way to locate the vehicle is by clicking on its actual icon, not the name. This will automatically take you to the vehicle, but will zoom in at the same time. You may have noticed this vehicle displays an arrow rather than an icon or symbol of the vehicle. I will explain why. If you use the arrow, it will point in the last known direction of the vehicle. To change it, click on the menu beside the object and go down to the word Edit. Click on that word. Here you can edit each object's own individual settings. On the Edit Object menu, select Icon. Then show Icon or Map, and select either Icon or Arrow. If you choose Icon, you can click on it to select a different one. There are many other things you can do in this section, most of which are self-explanatory, but for the time being, just click Save. So far we have been using the Google Street Map. If you click the top right hand corner, you can change this to different maps. There are a number of options depending on the version of the program that you have. Here we are using Google Satellite View, but it works just the same as the Street View. Here is the Ordnance Survey map, the Bing map, and finally back to Google. At the top of the object panel can be seen a number of tabs. Most of these will be explained in the help files, but let's have a look at the History tab. Clicking on the History tab will reveal a number of options. First one is to select the vehicle you have in mind, in this case Steve's at Van. You can then select when you want the filtering to be done from. We will select the 5th till the 5th and then we'll take it up until 8 o'clock that night. Click on show and it will display the vehicle's route for the specified times. Because the arrow icon is a light it will also show its direction If we now select data points, it will show us the locations where data was taken. 
Clicking on any of those data points will reveal the time the fix was taken and also the speed, plus various other information. There is also a useful little shortcut that will take you to any individual's object's own report. Go to an object and click on its menu. In this case it is a Doha based vehicle. Select Show History followed by any of the preset reports up to three months ago. We will look at today. This shows you where the object has been up until the time you run the report. On the left hand side it will also break it down into time parked and time travelled. Let's now take a look at some of the other many features in this program. I'm going to talk about zones. I'm going to create a zone. Having created the zone, I'm now going to draw it. This zone, we'll say, is for somebody operating out of Guernsey and they want to put a ring around Guernsey covering their cruising area. They could then set up an event that is triggered whenever that vessel leaves the cruising area. Things might change and they suddenly find they have to go off to one of the other islands. So that zone could be extended to also cover that island, giving them a long oblong shaped cruising area. As you can see, the drawing tool is quite flexible and you can make it do almost anything that you want. Here is an actual zone set up by one of our customers. It is connected to an event that triggers a message every time one of his fleet goes into the London congestion area, thereby saving him a nasty surprise. Let's now turn our attention as to how to create an event. If you go up to the settings, little tip here, it looks like a graphic equaliser. Click on that and you'll see a tab for events. Click on that and you're on events. The bottom of the screen, you'll see there is a plus sign. If you click on that, it will allow you to create your event. As you can see, there are many options, most of which you can read about in the help file. We'll first of all select the type of event and as you can see, there are many of them. At the bottom you will notice the one we talked about earlier, which is when you enter a zone or you leave a zone. And what we look at today, I think, is overspeed. Having selected overspeed, we now have to decide who it's going to apply to. So we can select for our objects, all of our objects, or we can say we'll go for one particular vehicle. Having selected that, we now set the speed which the event is going to be triggered. So with the speed set, we can now decide how we're going to be notified. System's message means it will pop up on the screen in the program. Obviously, you're going to accept this one. But there are various other ones that you can select, such as sending an email when the event happens. You can also see that you can change the colour of the icon when it happens. And that's a basic event set up. You can test it. If you're not happy with it, you can come back and modify it and try different options. And most important of all, you have to save it before you leave the program. While we are still looking at the vehicles, let me show you one last little trick which you may find useful before you leave your mooring to drive home. If you click on the traffic light symbol and assuming you're in the Google Street Maps, this will allow you to see traffic in the area around any of your icons. This is showing that there's a problem on the southbound A3 near Portsmouth and in fact further down we can see the road is actually closed. Zooming out allows us to see alternative routes and decide if there's a way around the problem. 
and when you've finished using this feature all you need to do is to click on the traffic lights to turn it off again. To close this tutorial let's look at history regarding vessels and why our units work differently to auto trackers. Here is a vessel track as plotted with a normal tracker which updates every x seconds or y distance covered. If we zoom in for a closer look you can see the vessel actually crosses the land and rejoins the water on the other side. This is because the unit is designed to report it based on distance or time. Here is the same vessel's history as shown by one of our units. The difference is obvious and this is because we use both time and distance covered reporting. But we also report when you tack more than a few degrees or have a large increase in speed. This is even more obvious when you look at a mooring. This is a standard auto unit and this is with one of ours. As you can see, using all four parameters makes a world of difference. Well, that concludes this short tutorial. But remember, if you're stuck, clicking on the help icon at the top of the screen will take you to the help file. If you cannot find the answer there, you can email us seven days a week.